So, but you can, do, you can be aggressive or you can, be, you can do that slow. So it depends what the people want. For you, that you young, it depends what you want. If you want to work your life, it's okay. You like, you like your job? Yeah. Would you work for free? No. So you don't like that shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. You don't like it. You need the money that you like the job, but it's not something that you want to do for free. So you don't love that. So in real estate, you can do whatever you want if you like it. But if you don't like it, let's, let's say that he, he has his, um, his company, and he's doing pretty good in his company. He doesn't want to get rid of his company. He's doing pretty good. But what he's going to do with the money that he makes? He got to invest somewhere. So he can use real estate as a uh, leverage to multiply his income, right? But he got a different plan like myself, like when I started, so I was broke. And I had to work pretty fast in order to make the money that I wanted. So I want, at the beginning I want $10,000. But when I arrive here, I start mowing grasses. So in order to make $10,000 mowing grasses, how many? How many jobs you gotta do? A lot of them. So I see that I have to, uh, come on, say, say, um, speed up. Speed up. I speed up and make money pretty quick. Like everybody wanna do money pretty quick. When I, 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 I talk to people and I ask them what you wanna do, and say, well, I wanna make the money as fast as possible. So I want me too, right? I wanna make money pretty fast, but Let's say in construction, how long it take in order to produce money? Uh, yeah. Maybe one year. To build the house, to get all the permits, to one year. To make how much? It depends how much you invest. So it depends what you want to do. So in my, in, uh, in my career, what I've done in the last, I started in 2007, 2008 as a real estate agent, I didn't make that much money. So to be honest with you, I didn't make, well, I made what most of the real estate agents make, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. Because I was average, I, was, I wasn't that good. I never get a training to be the best real estate agent. I never get prepared in sales. So you better than me by that time when I didn't got any, any preparation. You got training in, for sell cars, right? So I didn't have that training, so I didn't, I didn't do good. And my inner circle, or my circle where I, where I, people that I met, so they didn't have money too. So when I see a real estate agent that make money is because his inner circle got some, they got some money. And they say, well, I, he's doing pretty good, but he's not doing pretty good. It's that he's selling houses in Lake Nona, for example. Lake Nona, he sells houses for $500,000. The commission is 3%. Five, it's 15000 per each house that he sells. If I'm going to sell in 200 and below, so I'm going to make four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. It's, it's harder for myself. People that live in, in, in Miami, average house in Miami and Doral, $1 million. Now, $1 million, 3% out of that, $30,000. How many houses he got to sell in order to make a good lifestyle? Probably 20, but here it's harder. So it depends where you go. So when I start, I was thinking and uh, bill $10,000 $10, in residual income. But I started getting loans from people, and it was harder for myself because when you get a loan and you buy a house, how much you make out of that in rental? 300 dollars $300. How many houses you gotta have or you gotta own to make $10,000? Shit, it's a lot of houses. And it's a lot of money that I have to raise and I didn't know how to raise money. So you study and you study on how difficult it is to raise money from people when you don't have the experience. How much money have you raised in the last six months? Zero. Probably zero. That's the hardest part because you're not used to and you're not training for that. So I start 
one by one. And in two years, I have like two, three houses. I didn't make that much money. But then I got in a flip training, and I wasn't in favor of the flip because the flip said that you have to pay capital gains. And capital gain is the hardest money to pay. So I was in favor of residual income, but it was too slow. And for myself, going faster, so I have to raise money faster too, and I wasn't prepared. So when I went to that flipping uh, training, so the first thing that I learned is that there are other people that have the money that I don't have. But there are other people that didn't have the time that I had. So I had the time, and the people have the money. Yeah, we both have the same training. So what I got to do? Fun it up. Is that what said? Fun it up? Fun it up. So I fun it up with uh, Angel or with whoever, and I make money out of that. So when I start working in that way, I say, well, if I got money from him, I can get money from anybody else. What I got to get good is raising money from people. So I start reading books about raising money, reading books about uh, influence other people. So I start making money in that way. But I start paying too much capital gains. In order to avoid capital gains, what, I, what we got to do? We got to have a uh, rental portfolio that can you know, write off all those earnings. So, and that's how I start. And three years ago, when I, I was doing pretty good in flips, so I saw an opportunity in the construction because the, the flips were not that good as before. There were not um, enough inventory in the, that, I can, that I can get. So I start with new construction. And Adan, who's my son, so he started like two years, two years, two years and a half? Three, three. three years. And I, was, I started teaching people how to do this business, either flip or new construction. So we start with the, with the flip training. But the hard part was working the mindset of the people. So because most of the people ask one or two people for money, and if they say no, what they say? They say, nobody want to give me money. Nobody want to loan me money. So it's not nobody. It's one, two, or three. And most of the people go to Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, and what they do? They ask for construction loans, and they don't going to get construction loans. They ask for flip. Well, money for flip, they don't want to get money for flip. So they said, no banks want to give me money. So they, they go into the wrong, wrong lender. So that's what I learned in those trainings, so that there are people that want to meet up with you, want to partner up with you. There are enough lenders that you can, you can uh, get money from. But the main thing is the mindset that, that you can get. And that's what I started working with Adan. He said, OK. Guess what, what, what he told me when he started? Well, but I don't have the money. So with my own family, changing that mindset that, how you say, scar scarcity? Scarcity. Scarcity, that don't have money and that you can find the money. He told me, no, I, don't, I can't do that business because I don't have the money. I can't do this deal because I don't have the money. I can't do this deal because I have no money. I had, so when I got a good deal, what I, what I told him, you can do this deal because you don't have the money. Or you learn how to raise money, or you can go work. So he went work, but I'm proud of him because he went over all this thing. He learned that he can raise money from anybody, that the problem is not the money. The problem is the mindset. And the problem is that if you don't have the money, other people have the money. So the money is not the problem. It's how many people you touch or you talk to. So when he told me, in six months, I haven't got any money, it's because you haven't touched enough people. So and that's what I feel pretty good right now about him, that he, those fears that all of us or most of us has, so you got to go over those fears. And when you cross that, how you said, uh, barrier? Barrier. The barrier? 
So you start seeing more opportunities. And it's for everybody. So I'm gonna leave it and we're gonna talk later about the new construction opportunity that we have and we are offering what we are offering right now and the opportunity that is for everybody. The thing is that everybody now say that there is an opportunity somewhere. It's like cliche, you say? Everybody says, I have an opportunity, I have an opportunity. Everybody has an, a fucking opportunity. But is that real opportunity or no? So I don't like to say I have an opportunity. There is something that everybody can do now and make money. So but how are you going to make money if you invest whatever you invest and you get 80, 90% out of your money? If I tell him you're going to make 50, 80% out of your money, what do you think? Hmm. Is that true? Because how, how much did the bank pay you for the money? 1%. Zero, almost zero. So when you say tell somebody you can do 50, 60% out of your money, everybody react against that. So and that's what we're making right now here. And the good thing is that we work on infinite returns because we don't put the money. Who put the money? Either the lender and a private investor. We put all together and we get a part of it. And we put our money in the rental, in the rental side. That's the most important in each business because we want to live for free. We want to live, uh, we, don't have, we don't need to work for money. So we put the money work for us. So I'm going to leave Adam with you and then we're going to go to some questions that you have. Yeah, so uh, he's going to go over our current business strategies right now, but I just want to talk a little bit about myself and, you know, kind of so you guys know who I am, so you guys know who he is, and, you know, that way we can kind of get to know each other. Uh, when I started with real estate, very similar to probably most of you guys in the room, I didn't really know much except for what I saw from him and my mom, you know, because they, they were in the industry. Uh, so my journey started actually four years ago. Uh, I was out of college, and I was an athlete my whole life. I played baseball. I played in college. I played a little bit professionally. And that's all I wanted to do. All I wanted to do was play baseball, training every day, and that's all my mind was focused on. And I thought I was going to play in the major leagues. You know, that was my goal. That's what I wanted to do. And obviously, I'm not playing in the major leagues. I'm standing here before you today. But, you know, a lot of times uh, when one dream doesn't come true, you can succeed in another area. You know, there's a blessing hidden underneath that. And so once I was done with college, I played for a little bit. And once I was done playing, uh, I, I wanted to keep pursuing baseball, so I actually I got a job in professional baseball. I didn't, pl I didn't keep playing, but I got a job there. And I thought, okay, I'm going to coach in the major leagues. I got a job with the Phillies. I was coaching minor league baseball with the Phillies. I was the youngest coach in their system. Uh, I thought I was going to coach in the major leagues and then be a GM and, and do all of that. Uh, but blessing in disguise, in 2019, our season got cut short. We didn't have a minor league season because of COVID. So I was able to come back here and go all in on, re on real estate. So what I started doing, I started, uh, we'll, t we'll tell you guys a little bit about what we're doing, but I started looking for property, started developing it, and I started selling it, right? And uh, so 2020 came and I was, you know, was kind of split about what to do, but I said, let me give this baseball thing a chance. I went and I went to go coach in tw uh, last year, 2021. Uh, COVID was 2020, so not 2019. So 2020 was that when all that happened. Went in 2021, coached, hated it. It was a business, it wasn't fun. I thought it was gonna be like playing, it was nothing like it. I thought pro baseball was gonna be the best thing ever, and it, you know, it was a business. It's, it's long hours, it's a grind, and you know, my family's lifestyle drastically changed uh, about four or five years ago, you know, when they started having a little bit of success. And so I got used to a certain kind of lifestyle, and I didn't have that kind of lifestyle when I was in, in pro baseball. So I wanted that lifestyle back. So, after the 2021 season, I decided I didn't want to keep coaching. I wanted to go, you know, all in. And by that time, a lot of my projects were coming to life. And, you know, so far from the end of last year to uh, today, you know, I've been able to develop multiple uh, projects and I've been able to do pretty good with them. You know, it's life-changing money, to, to be honest with you guys. And so one of the things when you're starting out, real estate is so broad. There's so many things. You could be a realtor, you can be a developer, you could be an investor, you know, everybody's a real estate investor today, you know, but what does that really mean? And I think the answer lies within you and it happens with iterations. So because we don't learn through reading books, oh, you know, we can, you can, we can learn a little bit from books, but we have to learn through iterations and action. 
And so what real estate, what being in real estate means to you is gonna be up to what you define it as. And it's gonna happen through you taking action and through you, you know, putting together effort. So one of the things, one of the most important things in our industry and in our business model is that we have to raise money. And raising money is not easy. You know, when I started, it was very tough for me. Like he said, you know, it's been six months and he hasn't been able to raise money. And it, it's tough, right? So, but you have to educate yourself through your mentors, through, you know, make, making calls, getting motherfucked a couple times, you know, getting the phone hung, hung up on you. But eventually you start having success and eventually that starts culminating into something that, you know, a business model that works. And that's kind of what we found is, you know, through iteration, starting with the flips, uh, later now go going into development, that's something that we found is a viable business model. And now what you do after you find that business model is just rinse and repeat, right? Because one of the, uh, uh, an important thing and he'll talk about, he always talks about passive income, but you can't create passive income unless you have capital. Capital means cash. If you don't have cash, you're not gonna have passive income. We joined the multifamily mastermind, you know, it's 50, 100 units plus. The guy, the guy that runs the mastermind, you know, he makes probably 50 to 100 million dollars off, off his multifamily. He said, you, you can't be in multifamily unless you have money. And the money is in, in, in multifamily when you have rentals, that's the cash flow, that's the, the pillow money, that's money that you make while you sleep. But you can't get to that kind of money unless you have capital, unless you have cash. And so, especially when you're young, you have to have capital. You have to build capital and you have to, to, to build capital, you have to either sell some kind of product or have some kind of service, right? And that's what we've been doing with the new construction. We have a product, we have a service, and we provide it and that's how we build, that's how we build capital. We take that capital, we, turn, we put it into long-term assets, and that's how we get our pillow money, that's how we get our cash flow. And so, again, like to summarize that, real estate's very broad. Right, and you might not know, you know, what direction you want to go in, but we want to kind of open your eyes to what we're doing today, and you know, it might expand your horizon a little bit and get you thinking of, in a different way, right? Because any of you guys is not different from him. That's not different from me. It's not different from anybody. They just have different information, right? And everybody processes information in a different way. So what you hear, what you, what you learn here, you might be able to apply in your own unique way, in your own business, and whatever you're doing. Um, so with that. We, you know, we have some common questions here. We'll take questions at the end, but I want him to a little, talk a little bit about what we're doing today and how we're applying it, you know? And like I said, everybody's different. Everybody has their own business strategy, but, you know, what we do works, and, that, I mean, that's, that's why we're here. We're here to talk about it. So you want to go to the next? So I'm going to ask you a question about that. People is... Uh, is is this scary right now about the recession that everybody is talking about, about uh, the crash that's coming, about whatever is going to happen in the, in the market. But what's your opinion with the recession that every peop everybody is talking about and how you see that and how you're protecting about that? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a slowdown in the market. And, but the thing, the thing about real estate is, and not, not many people know this, is that real estate, unless you're in it, real estate is very local. It's a local market. Right, so whatever is happening in California does not affect the real estate market in Florida. Whatever is going on in Jacksonville doesn't affect the real estate market in Ocala. Doesn't affect the real estate market in Port Charlotte. So when you're in real estate, you have to work market by market, and you have to be an expert in your local market. You can't, you, you, you know, you have all these macro people. They want to look at all the macro. They want to do all these newsletters. You know, they, they're looking at YouTube. Again, even my my own investors, they're calling me. Hey, how's the how, how are the houses doing? I saw, you know, that. Mortgage, your mortgage rates are up, or um, loan applications are, are, are way down from three. I'm like, the, more, the loan applications haven't changed in our, in our markets. You know, we're still getting, we're still selling homes. Right now, for us, it's taking a little bit longer to sell, but not, it's not drastic. We're still selling. I just made 80 grand a couple weeks ago from selling a house, one house, you know, so plus commission. So the, the recession, I mean, there's definitely this economic slowdown across the country, but in re within real estate, it's a very local market. So you have to take that, you know, you have to take the recession with a grain of salt. Well, the interest rate went up a little bit, but it doesn't mean that the houses are going to come down. The prices are not going down. So in the last eight, nine weeks, we haven't seen that happening. And I think it's not going to happen. It's people say it's slowed down, but what is a slowed down is that people qualifying for a house. Uh, regular people, home buyers that are, you know, facing that they can afford to certain uh, prices, and now they they, they gotta go go down in in, in, yeah. in the prices that they they wanna buy. Cheaper. 
cheaper houses or you know something that they can afford or they can pay but i don't see changes i see low inventory still there are low inventory in all the cities that we're working so and i see a lot of opportunities right now for everybody uh, probably like i was telling him in the last two three years you are you have you are used to make much money than i was making three four five years ago that in a house i make 15 20 25 thousand per house uh, either in the fleet or in the in the new construction, and now he's getting sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars per house. So what happened if we gotta go back and make thirty, forty thousand dollars out of what? That's the question. Out of what? How much money are you investing in those deals? So most of the money come from harmony lenders or lenders that private investors that give you the money for eight, ten percent. So. The thing is the leverage that you're taking. But you gotta learn two things. How, how to handle debt and how to handle uh, those loans, those uh, the taxes. So that's two things that you gotta get prepared for. Taxes and loan and, and debt. So if you learn how to use those two things, you're gonna leverage your money or the mo probably you don't have the money, but you can leverage other people's money and make some money too. So that's the thing right now that is good money here for example in the new construction you can build a house like this and you can invest probably fifty thousand dollars on it and you make forty fifty sixty thousand dollars so that's what happening in um that's a house in ocala so yeah that's in ocala is that in ocala that's in volusia volusia county ocala. is it that's ocala that's ocala so in ocala we're making around forty thousand dollars in a regular house so, but we gotta invest $50,000, but how can I find those $50,000? Because the guy that just came, he said, okay, I have 50,000, so you got only for one house. But if you wanna make more money, what you gotta do? So, and that's what we have learned, how to leverage the money and how to work this business in volume that you can make a lot of money. But it's not the money because he said, I, I just made $80,000, okay, in one house. How many houses can you sell this year? 20, 30, 40. I don't know how you build it. You're building like 25, 30, 35 houses. So probably he made over a million dollars, but where are you gonna put that money off? So you make million dollars, so what are you gonna do with that money? Reinvest. Okay, reinvest, and you're gonna make more money, but you gotta go in passive income. So that's the money that he said, the pillow money that you wanna have in your life that give you Give you money while you sleep. So Pay you while you sleep. Dale, uh, go to the next one. So in a house like this, actually this is in Port Charlotte. In Port Charlotte, even though that you invest in less money, you're making more money, but there are some risks that you gotta go over. You have totals there, you have uh, three that are protected by the county, and there are things that can happen. If a total come, if you, if a total could go there, so you, you're looking for what, six, seven thousand dollars for move, relocating that total. So probably you don't make sixty thousand dollars, but you make fifty-three thousand dollars. Who cares? But how much money you make it? I don't care how much money I make. I'm, I'm worried about the return of my investment. If I put fifty thousand, forty-five thousand dollars. $45,000 here and I make 150, where can I make that money? But even better, what about if I don't have to put the $45,000? How much money I'm gonna make? Infinite. infinite returns, and that's the key, we'll go infinite. So, and that's what we have learned and we teach, how you can work with infinite returns and you don't need your money to do that. But when you talk to people and you say you don't need money, what do people think? How you say in English, I don't know. Too good to be true, something like that. You're huh? full of shit. Okay, you're full of shit, scam, whatever. <laughs> but I don't care. At the end, I don't care because I make the money. So I don't care what other people say, what other people think. The thing is that I have to take advantage of what is happening now. And the best thing is that it's gonna happen always. All the time, there is gonna be something that you gotta do, now that you can do in real estate. Uh, any question? 
I want to build a little bit. Of, mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to ask you, what was the breakdown? How do you read that? Calculation? Yeah, so if you go down the line, so this is a new construct. There's a new construction in Port Charlotte, right? So we're building infill lots. The infill lots mean that it's a, in a pre-existing pre -existing neighborhood. You know, imagine that this neighborhood, you turn right, there's a lot right there. It can be built. No HOA. We buy it, then we develop it, right? We build that house on it. Okay, so you're going to have a lot price. You're going to have to buy the land, the lot, right? You're going to have your construction costs. So you're going to have to find your subs. You're going to have to find your GC. You're going to have to find, you know, all the different, your engineer, all the different things to build a home, right? Then you're going to have your closing costs plus financing. We like, you can build cash, okay? But would I rather, if I have $100,000, would I rather build one house and make this much or would I rather build four houses and do four times that much? Because at the end of the day, it's not your money. You're using the bank's money to leverage yourself. Right, so the closing cost plus financing refers to the loan, the loan cost, and the closing cost when you buy and when you sell. Okay, the loan, that's how much they're going to give you for the loan. Right, the gap refers to what you need to put in, because that's going to be so the loan plus the gap should cover your construction costs plus closing costs and financing. Right, so the gap could either come from you, your own personal cash, or it could come from an investor. We like to use an investor because the thing with your own money is that it runs out. I don't care if you have a million dollars in the bank if you do enough deals. You're going to run out of money to put into your deals, right? So that's the gap. And then the profit, I mean, that's how much we're, that's how much we're making right now when we're, you know, we're selling the home with those. These are our most current costs so far in Port Charlotte. And these are, these are, most, these are the latest you know, costs and you know, a lot of price, construction costs. It's rounded up, but that's, that's what you're going to see. The return is going to be the return on the money that you put in. So if you, if you put in 45000 that's going to be your return. You know, you're making 60 k if you put in zero, then it's infinite. That's why he talks about infinite returns. When you have no money in the deal, and you sell, you know, you sell anything that you make on top of that is infinite. So. So the lot goes into the uh, construction costs as well, or how does it work? No, the lot is the lot and the cons construction costs. Now this house is selling in three sixty five. Okay. In Port yeah, Charlotte, this model is selling in three sixty five. And so the, you gotta come up with that money though. Yeah. With thirty thousand dollars. We gotta come with the lot. Plus, plus the construction cost. cost, plus financing cost. You gotta come up with the 45 is this. this the 45 is the difference between what you need to build the house and the loan that you get from the bank. Okay. So if I get from the lender 235, so I'm just gonna need 45,000. The thing is that I need to buy the lot and they're not gonna give me money until I have something built. So I have to build something. Let's put In these houses, we put like 40, 50,000 plus the lot before we get the first draw from the bank. Yeah, up front, that way you could start. Yeah, you gotta put 75,000 and then yeah. get it back. But at the Once end, at the end when you see the number, you're gonna you say, okay, I put it out of my pocket 45,000. You're 45, ready to 45 yeah. because everything went back. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the, the, upfront, the upfront cost that we use, besides the lot, you know, usually just be to get the permit set up, to get the lot cleared, to get it up to blocks. You know, so it's like a little tidbit from our construction process at least. Yeah. And some people ask, it's like, okay, if I use my own money, what's it's not better if I use my own my use, I use my own money. To say, well, I wouldn't do it. I would spread it out in different deals. You can scale it. Yeah, you can scale it. And if I make in three deals, I make hundred eighty thousand dollars instead of you only do one, and you make what you saving here. You are just saving the closing costs and financing, or probably fi or just financing. That is like twelve thousand dollars there. So one does it make sense? One of the things that you know, kind of people, people will say like, oh, I want to do a flip this year. Or I want to do a build this year. And they think they're going to get rich off one flip or one build. That's, that's BS. That's not going to happen. You might make a little bit of money off one deal, but you're not going to create wealth off of one deal. So what we try to do, we try to work in scale. We try to work in, you know, we try to do multiple. We try to work in areas where we can buy multiple lots and build multiple houses. We're not going to go in a, in a market to only build one house. That's not enough money. That's, I mean... I don't care, even if it's even if it's eighty grand, that's not life changing money. Eighty grand won't really do it won't change your life, you know. It might help you out for a little bit, but it's not gonna change your life. So But it depends on people too, because uh if you say, Okay, I wanna make sixty thousand extra or fifty thousand extra or hundred thousand extra, it's okay because you're making good money in your in your business, so it's plus what you're making. Right. So in yeah. order to do this, you don't need to you don't need to be a developer, you don't need to, to worry about the construction. So What's the labor that you put in there is pretty much nothing. Yeah. The money and the GC is doing pretty they much. They do all your. They do all your work. And you can make all the money by making more. And what we do is we help the people to build if they want to. 
But what we're teaching and what we're doing in the workshop uh, that we're doing on the 27th, we're doing one day workshop uh, that we're gonna show the people how to work it if you wanna do by yourself, or you can, we can help you to do that. We can connect with the lenders, we can help you with the construction, we can help you to find the right lot in the right place in order you make that kind of money. So basically that's what we're teaching in, 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 in that workshop. Also, the importance of the taxes is not only make money, like he said, if he make one million dollars, so how much money he gotta pay in taxes? 300,000, at least. Around, around at 300, least. 300 to 400,000 dollars. So why are you making, so you're not making for one million dollars, you're making 600,000 dollars or 700,000 dollars for all the work that you put in. So, but if you work smart, you keep that million dollar or that whatever, but you learn how to use taxes in your favor and you don't have to pay taxes. But when people hear that or listen to that, that you don't have to pay taxes, people think that, okay, you're cheating. Or they're rich cheating or whatever. So, but that's for everybody that can learn how to leverage the taxes and take those incentives in your favor and don't pay taxes and make more money. If I don't pay taxes and he pay taxes, obviously in one, two, three years, who make more money? Even though that we have the same deals, I'm gonna make more money because I didn't have to pay what he gotta pay. I reinvest that money instead of wasting that money, throwing into the company. Right. One thing so. that, you know, ta a good saying for taxes is that taxes are just incentives that the government puts out to do what, what it wants done. So if government wants housing bill, they want affordable housing, so they're, you know, they're, rewar they're rewarding investors who are building affordable housing and are renting it out to tenants. You get a tax break off of that. You know, so we like to take advantage of as many tax breaks as we can. So can you, the other thing that, you, that we also do is like, for example, in multifamily or duplexes or forward, I prefer hold this property that sell it. So because I make more cash flow in more units than in only one unit. So, but this is an example why you can, why you can make in a, one of these units. So you can make $100,000 $100, profit just investing $100,000, so it's 130% return on your investment. But if I raise that money, so I can make $80,000, $90,000 paying the other investors. But the good thing with this, that we just went through one, one deal in uh, Port Charlotte, is that I can build and I can build equity in the property. In this property, we're building like $150,000 in equity with a loan that we're using when we finish the property. It's a, it's a construction loan. It's a one-year construction loan. But then we put the tenants, and then we refi. When we refi, we get money back as a cash out. And that money that you recover from that investment or the cash out that you get is, is, is not taxable. Tax it's free. free money, it's tax free. So, it's a huh? It's a loan. It's a loan. So I get 60, 50, I got, in the, I'm gonna get like $70,000 back. So I get $70,000, no taxes. So also tax again. And I'm making in like 45% return if I leave some, mo if I would leave some money, but like I, I don't put any money, so I'm, I'm finishing, um, I have infinite returns. And in one of these, I was starting renting, I started renting in 2200. Now I'm, I'm renting in 2500. So I'm making like $1,600 per building with no money invested in the deal. So that's what's happening now. Uh, and that's what I tell people, okay, if you wanna, why are you gonna buy an end product that you don't have any equity? Why are you gonna buy at the final price? Why don't you build it? Build that equity and then refi. And probably you have to put some money and you leave some money in the deal, but the returns are pretty high if you compare with something that you're gonna buy at the end price. There's a reason why we're not doing flips right now. There's a reason why we're building, you know, and that's one of, that's a big reason. You know, we have the built-in equity. We, it's cheaper right now to, to build and to take something. These prices are high. You know, so if you're gonna be overpaying for a property that's pre-existing, as opposed to where you can get a brand new property, you know, less maintenance. And I mean, you have the option to either sell it, make your profit, or you can rent it out for cash flow. Yeah, I was talking to a lender in Miami, and I don't know what kind of money he lent, but 
he was telling me, well, in your business model, I prefer do it than borrow you, lend you the money. I said, yeah, it's more money there, but you're a lender, so I'm a developer. So, or you're a lender or you're a developer because you, you're telling me that you want to make that kind of money. Okay, come in. But you're not a lender neither. So, or you're a lender or you do this, or you do both in your favor. But he was trying to say, okay, you're making too much money in that and why I'm gonna lend you the money, okay? You told me that you, you're a lender, so, so I don't understand. But well, that's the opportunity that we, ha we have now. Uh, we're building also in Ocala, uh, 1,100 square foot. We're building like 60 units there for renting. And when we started not doing the numbers, they were like in 1,400 the rent, $1,400 a month. And now it's like $1,600 a month. We're gonna make like 21% out of our money. And we're only, go, only going to leave in the deal like twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars in the deal. So it's a good time to build a, a rental portfolio that is high with high returns that probably we don't, we won't see in, in, in a lot of time. So when I start, I start buying houses at at the market price. Now that I know how to build it, I. I got this, this guy. So, and that's why we introducing people. Why don't you? Every anybody can do it. Why don't you participate in it and take advantage of what's happening now? But most of the people don't have the knowledge, don't have the information, and we understand. So when you talk to people, they say, "Okay, 100% in returns." It's hard to accept that is what it is. Any question? So here's a here's the different options that you know we're we have right now. These are two exit strategies. You sell sell the home or you rent the home uh, or the duplexes or fourplexes in some areas. So yeah, that's simple. That's, that's simple. So we you can find a lot or we can sell you the lot we build for you. You can build yourself and the same thing. So but is repeat the process one time, another time, and people ask me, where can I build, what city? Now, well, you're in the business. Most of the cities here are the same. No inventory, the, the profit is pretty good in all, all of them. What I have to com compare is which one, in which one I can get more money. So and that's what we are now, building in Ocala, we're building in Port Charlotte, Devari, Oran City, Deland, Deltona, uh, Port Charlotte, uh, Kissimmee, Poinciana. So, Sebring. Uh, in Sebring, we're starting in Sebring now, and it's pretty cheap the lot. The returns are pretty good. So, every, everywhere. Any question? Ya vos no tenés ninguna, se te acabaron. Any question? Give the money to Hennessy and she know what to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's something I, I wrote up before you started. So, you know, you start, if you get into real estate, what you need, big things that you need is patience because it's going to take a little bit of time to get off the ground. You need balls because it's, 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 uh, it's not risky, but there's risk with any investment. I need, you know, if you go to college to get a degree, that's risk. You, get, you run the risk of going there and flunking or going there and not getting a job. There's just risk with anything. So you got to have balls. You gotta have a team, right? You gotta have people that are helping you out. You can't do it by yourself. It's a big lesson for me the last couple of years. I try to do it all by myself. Can't do that. And scale. Uh, you know, it's it's if you're trying to really build wealth, create wealth, you're gonna have to scale at some point. Uh, and then our business model, right? We find the lot, we fund, we find the loan, we find the, the investor, we add value by building, we build that equity, and then we either sell or rent the property. So that's kind of our business model. Good question. When you talk about the team, what do you, what do you mean by that? Uh, our team, for, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, right? So for us, we have the permit and engineering department. They get all the permits, every, you know, the, the engineer, the stamp, <clears throat> all the different uh, septic, utilities, everything. We have the acquisitions team who finds the land. We have our sales team who sells a lot. We have our, our loan, you know, our lender, or people that help with the, loan, with the loan. So you need people to help you out. 
and you need to have connections. So if you're running a business like this, you know, or if you're doing construction or, or real estate or any, you know, you need people to help you out. You're not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to go put the plumbing in and then come back and sell the house. You know, I need to pick one thing that I'm good at and then let other people handle the rest. Yeah, that's the main thing, no excuses. So if you want to participate on the 27th, so you can go online, so click the link in, uh, in the Instagram. Um, we're going to have a good time. So it's a learning uh, day that every time that I do that and I teach, I, I also learn from other people. But it's a good opportunity to share and take advantage of this. But I, I took like three years to learn things the hard way because first of all, they were not training in Spanish. I went to English trainings and I didn't get all 100% of what they say, maybe 20, 20%, 30%. And what I got or what I, what, I, what I got from the training maybe was different from what they were saying. But the good thing is that it took me three years and in one day I put the people and tell you, go directly to this lender this is how we would structure the business. This is all the business, how it works, where you gotta go, and you go directly to the point. So you don't have to go around like I was like three years, find it out the way to make money out of it. So I, we go directly to the point, that's what you need to do, and this is how we do, and we don't hide anything, because people think that you don't, wanna, you don't wanna teach everything that you know. So we teach everything that we know and how we do it, uh, in the way that we make money. Probably you want to make more money, so you would need more training. But you're going to leave that day from here ready to start and ready to make money if you want to. But everybody that comes to the training, ask me for if, they, if there is some guarantee. Say, no, because I don't know you. So I know that the system works, and it has worked for me. But it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you if you don't work. you got to work here. But you don't need to develop neither. So you know all the strategy and you can build with other people, but you know how to do the business. The business is get the money, put a, put a, a loan on it, do the, the construction, and sell the house or either rent the house, and you make money. So every, any, anybody that wants, go to that link, and, and we'll see you here in, on the 27th. It's just for 30 people. Um, we just started in the English session, and Adan is going to be part of it, and I, I'm going to leave all, all the things to him in English. So, But we got a good support. Most of the, the team that we have is English guys, so all the knowledge is here. Yeah, so just to, just to summarize a little bit what you said, we're having a workshop on the 27th of August. It's intensive. You know, it's way more intensive than this. And we'll teach you guys everything from how to find a lot. We even have, we even have lots that we have available. Uh, show you how we outsource leads, how we contact owners of, you know, of vacant lots, we'll, how, do we find, how we find the subcontractors, GC, you know, permitting process. You know, we'll give you everything, everything. Like you said, you know, we do this. We like to surround ourselves with people that, that want to get into business and that want to really grow, you know, because I think it's always good to surround yourself with people who are going to bring you up and uh, not down. So, uh, I mean, I invite all you guys, who are, you know, whoever wants to come, and hope to see you guys there. Cool. cool. Any question? Nothing? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh,